three points to consider when designing a course syllabus. Good day, today I want to talk about syllabus design. During three years of intensive teaching experience in China, I noticed that all students have different behavior and activity in the classroom. At first, I associated it with different climates and families. But many children who were bad in some of the activities have good families. I want to remind you that I work with the first group of young learners. Anticipated Problems Problems were observed the following characters, the inability to draw elementary objects, difficulties with concentration, perseverance, someone could in the middle of the lesson get up and start dancing or singing, someone was very close and shy, someone threw the dips noisy and did not feel the silence, someone was very smart in my opinion, but did not interact with other students and kept to himself, rejecting the whole concept of the lesson but still continuing to be on it. All this I analyzed consciously and remember each of the students with problematic behavior in my opinion, but also remember their positive and strong qualities. After trying to solve the problem and find the reasons I made a discovery for myself in the form of Howard Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences, it so enriched my experience that now I started to try to take into account these eight intelligences when design syllabus. Multiple Intelligences Here is a list of the eight intelligences that each person has according to the theory. 1. Visual Spatial Intelligence 2. Linguistic Verbal Intelligence 3. Logical Mathematical Intelligence 4. Body Kinesthetic Intelligence 5. Musical Intelligence 6. Interpersonal Intelligence 7. Intrapersonal Intelligence 8. Naturalistic Intelligence Some intelligences are more pronounced and what can be developed. It follows that ideally, the plan should include lessons with classes that develop this entire list of intellects. Actually, I used intuitive or experience exchange use schemes of lessons that are somehow included activities that touched on most of these intellects. But after taking courses at IDTT TEFL 120 and TILE, I learned how to do it professionally. Types of Activities And so what activities develop visual spatial intelligence? Reading, putting puzzles together, interpreting pictures, drawing, painting, and the visual arts. What activities develop linguistic verbal intelligence? Telling stories, things explanation, debating or giving persuasive speeches, reading and tracing words or letters. What activities develop logical mathematical intelligence? Scientific experiments, logical games, Lego, thinking about abstract ideas. What activities develop body kinesthetic intelligence? Dancing and sports exercises, handmade crafts, physical coordination activities. What activities develop musical intelligence? Songs and melodies, rhythm, playing musical instruments. What activities develop interpersonal intelligence? Communicating verbally, nonverbal communication, seeing situations from different perspectives. Creating positive relationships with others, resolving conflict in groups. What activities develop intrapersonal intelligence? Analyzing his or her strengths and weaknesses, tests, analyzing theories and ideas, questions, a clear understanding of the basis for his or her own motivations and feelings, conversations. What activities develop naturalistic intelligence? All activities about botany biology, and zoology, camping, gardening, hiking, and exploring nature. Are you ready to teach English abroad? And in conclusion, I want to say that I have become an ardent supporter of the Howard Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences and will always rely on it and advise to get acquainted with all who have to do with children's education, development, and psychology. All the best and thank you for you. Speak with an ITTT advisor today to put together your personal plan for teaching English abroad. Send us an email or call us toll-free at 1-800-222-2222.
800-490-0531 to speak with an IDTT advisor today.